turn it up. We're gonna sing it out for all the world to hear. Oh, 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 oh. There's life for everyone. A new day has begun. Something to shout about. really powerful to be able to like control the band like that. I'm going to use that. To Ooh. Ooh. Well, hey, good morning. Welcome to The Ridge. We are so glad you're here. If you're here in person or if you're joining us online, we are glad we get to hang out with you some today. If you are new to The Ridge, we especially want to welcome you and help make you feel welcome as well. Uh, if you'd like to get to know us, we also would love to get to know you conveniently. Uh, there's a couple easy ways to do that. One of those is by texting the word hello to 812-408-1188. We'll follow up with you, ask you a couple questions so we can send you some information about us. We also have a QR code that you can scan it. It'll do the same thing. Those are in your seat backs or we've got them on the screen as well. Uh, also up on the screen is a little bit of information about how you can give through the Ridge. You can do that uh, in the drop boxes if you're here in person. We've got those at the back of the room or by the exit door at the front of the building. Uh, you can also give on our website at theridge.org slash give or in our app if you've got our app. All are easy, safe ways to do that and we really just want to say thanks for doing that. We are continuing a series today called Our Next Guest. Uh, we are talking today about flipping the script or changing our perspective. I'm actually really excited because my dad is speaking this morning, so he'll be up here in a little bit, but to warm him up a little bit, to get our perspectives shifting and our scripts flipping, which is very hard to say, uh, we're going to play a little game this morning. So I'm going to show you guys some pictures. If you're online, participate in the comments. If you're in the room, shout them out. I want you to tell me which of these is the right one, because some of these... This sounds like one of those clickbait articles, but the answer may surprise you. So we are going to look at a couple pictures. Let's see the first one. Do you guys think Looney Tunes, the logo is spelled T-U-N-E-S or T-O-O-N-S? Any guesses? <laughs> top, I hear top. Online, be commenting. Let us know what you think. Let's see what it is. 
It is the top. I thought it was the, I see some fist bumps in the room. Much appreciated. I thought it was the bottom one, like cartoons, tunes. No, it's like tunes, like music. So let's see that next one. Okay, we got the Monopoly man. Do you think he's got a cute little monocle on his uh, left eye, or do you think he is monocle-less? Top or bottom? I hear both on this one. This is exciting. I like a little controversy. Okay, let's see which one it is. It is the bottom one. I believe the Pringles man and I believe the guy on like the peanuts jar um, has a monocle, but Mr. Monopoly does not have one. So let's see the next one. All right, this is Pikachu. Uh, do you think he has a black tail or do you think it's yellow all the way up to the tip? Any guesses on that one? I hear both on this one too. This is great. Uh, let's see. No tip. I was told this morning that there's some variations or some relatives of Pikachu that do. I didn't know enough of that. I thought it was, I thought he had a black tip on his tail as well. So there you go. All right, let's see that next one. Fruit of the loom. Do you think there is a lovely cornucopia that all of the fruit is coming out of or not? Guesses, guesses, tell us online. Let's see the answer. Yeah, I know. Fruit of the Loom actually just posted a TikTok about this the other day that they were like, we're not telling anyone. But yes, there is no cornucopia. So there you go. And I believe we have one more left. Let's see. This is the Kit Kat wrapper. Do you think there is a hyphen or no hyphen? Top or bottom on this one? Bottom. Top. I heard both again. Let's see what it is. That is right, there's no hyphen in Kit Kat. So there you go, hope your perspectives have been changed a little bit this morning, hopefully you're warmed up for our message. We're actually gonna get the chance to sing right now, so if you're here, we'd love for you to stand and join us as we worship together. I say something
We did this next one last week. So when we get to these woes, let's just let this roof fly off this place, okay? Let's erupt in praise together. You guys feeling good this morning? <laughs> Me too. So let's sing together and worship.
is in his blood. Amen. Sing that name out. And Jesus, in light of heaven, and friend forever, his kingdom come. Beautiful. You guys may be seated. So right now, we're going to go into a time of communion. So whether you're here with us this morning or you're joining us online, what we do here is we welcome you, if you are a follower of Jesus, to, to partake in communion together as a church family. And so when I think about communion, I think of a couple different things. It's a time for us to reflect. It's a time for us to look back on Jesus' life and that sacrifice that he made for each and every single one of us. And, and there have been times, even in my own life, where honestly at this time I, I've, I've had moments of guilt where I'm like, man, I am not worthy of this. But, but that is not what this is about. This is about grace. It's about a God who loved each and every one of us so much that he sent his son to come here to show us how to live and that he died for our sins. So he sat with his friends and before he died and he said, hey, here's this bread, take this in remembrance of me. It's my body broken for you. And, and take this juice, it's, it's my blood shed. And so that's what we do here. We, we, take this, we take the juice, we take the bread, and we take communion together to remember that time. And then we look forward. So we look back, but now we look forward because our future is hopeful. We have a God who loved us, sent his son to die for us. And now we have the hope that we get to spend eternity with him. And so as we go into this song, I welcome you guys, if you want to, to take communion together during this next song. Let me pray for us. God, you are a big God. You are a mighty God. You are a good God. You are a God that loves us so deeply. You love us so deeply that you sent your son here to this earth to walk amongst us and before any of us in this room were even born on this earth he came to die for us that is amazing so thank you God for your son thank you for another day of life thank you for a time where we can reflect and remember be with us this week in your son's name we pray amen
never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let grateful for you. You are good. Thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for giving us a place where we can come and worship you freely. Pray these things in your son's name. Amen. According to the experts, I have 30 seconds to get you on my side. That's right, you're judging me. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it online. The pressure is immense. You're deciding, do I want to invest some time in this? Tell you what, I'm going to flip the script. Can I have another 30 seconds? I'm going to judge you instead today. <laughs> hmm, do I want to talk to you? <laughs> do I want to spend my time on you? You, you see me in the camera. Pretty uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Flipping a script is pretty awkward, especially when we got an idea built in. All right, you can kill the timer, and you guys can go back to judging me. I'll spin around if you know. 
when we change a view, it kind of rocks us sometimes. And sometimes different views get really embedded deep. It's no longer an opinion. It becomes a fact. And when somebody messes with your facts, ooh, that's rough, right? Somebody posts something on Facebook, and you go, I don't know if that might be true. Flipping a script is, is tough stuff. And guess what? We're in church, so who's the best flips, flipper of scripts of all time, right? Jesus. And I love, love, love how he flips some scripts with this special group of people. And I say special because Jerry talked about them last week, the Pharisees. The Pharisees were like the big-time script holders of all things about God. So the Pharisees were these guys that kind of were the rule keepers of God and man. So picture these guys, you know, dressed up kind of religious leaders, and they love the rules. The more rules you follow, the closer you are to God. So you're getting a picture, right? In today's terms, these guys were the, well, actually, guys. You ever in a room with a well, actually person? You're talking about something, and you, you know something, and, and then somebody goes, well, actually. Or the post, right? You post this happy post, I love puppies. And then, well, actually, puppies are improperly bred and will live a life of sadness. <laughs> what? That's exactly what it sounds like in my Facebook. I don't know if yours talks to you. <laughs> well, actually, is like, ah, just cringeworthy stuff, especially when they're wrong. And um, by the way, I don't know anything about puppies. I just totally made that up. I like petting other people's puppies, especially when they're carrying the little grocery bag of joy behind them. Um, I don't want any part of that stuff. But well, actually, people really get under my skin. And today we're going to see some well, actually, people kind of encounter Jesus. So we're going to dive into Luke 15 and kind of see a well, actually, well, actually scenario. Let's hit verse 1. It says, Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. Okay, you get the picture? Jesus is hanging out with regular people, right? No mention of the Pharisees here. This is just tax collectors, regular people, notorious sinners. Let's continue. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, and get this, even eating with them. Whoa, that's big stuff. We might miss this, but even eating with them was a big deal to the Pharisees. The Pharisees had rules for what and how you eat. So the rule keepers were pretty ticked off about this. So I'm imagining this scenario, you know, the Pharisees and religious law complaining, but they're religious leaders, right? A religious leader wouldn't just start cursing and spewing. They probably did one of the well actuallys. Well, actually, God wouldn't want that. Well, actually, we shouldn't associate with sinful people. Well, actually, I, I sound exactly like a Pharisee. I went back and studied that. It's a little bit like Thurston Howell III. Um, if you don't know who that is, ask an old person next to you um, and mention Gilligan's Island. But here's a little tip, no extra charge. Don't drop a well, actually, in front of Jesus. I think he's going to kind of one-up you on the whole God thing. And he doesn't respond with a well, actually. He could have dropped the biggest truth bomb on them in recorded history. But instead, he tells them a story. Now, we call Jesus' stories parables. They're a story with a point. And here, Jesus is going to respond with a story. And we know this because it says so in the next verse. So Jesus told them this story. <laughs> Bible's pretty logical. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? He didn't even answer the, the issue. He dropped a question. And I love this. I love what must be going on right now. Picture the, these Pharisees. Oh, is this a trick question? I think I should know this. I don't know this. And the Pharisees are probably, you know, churning in their mind doing the math. Let's see, 100 sheep, one goes away. Let's see, divide by, that's 1%. My math good? A lot of science people in the room. My math good, 1%? I got a thumbs up over here. 1% of sheep 
By the way, sheep aren't that valuable in this culture. Sheep are kind of like the lowest form of animal, so 1% of something that's not that great, I'd say let it go. Probably a bad sheep anyways, right? But Jesus continues and says, won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Reality check. All right, it wasn't a trick question. You go find it because, hey, if you're poor and everything you got is like worthless, you still want to hang on to that last little bit of worthlessness because it's all you got. So yeah, you go find it. But here's the flipping of the script now. The Pharisees are thinking through this going, wait a minute, Jesus hanging out with sinners, shepherds going after sheep. Oh no, I think something's going to come unraveled in my head. And what's coming unraveled in their head right at the beginning is Jesus flipping the script on what we believe about God. What we believe about God. According to the Pharisees, and even most people today, we believe that God is, is kind of this distant thing, and we have to work our way to him. We have to go to him. We have to do all the right stuff, and hopefully if we do one more good thing than we do bad thing, we'll score enough points. And God is distant and judging. But Jesus flips the script here. God isn't distant and sitting on some throne judging, kind of like people sitting on Facebook on a porcelain throne judging. That was hilarious if you're a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> that killed in most 10-year-old settings. <laughs> no. God isn't a God that is distant and judging. This parable flips the script. God is near and seeking. Totally blows away this idea of, of the Pharisees, of following the rules and working and working and doing good and good and good to get to God. The shepherd is the one that's going to go look for the sheep. And that's an amazing thought, that the God of the universe, the God of the universe seeks lost sheep. Wow. Imagine their little Pharisee hats went poof when that happened. Um, <laughs> incredible, incredible stuff. And it makes you feel good to know that a God of the universe cares that much. When we flip scripts, sometimes endorphins are released in our brains. Yeah, it's a, a funky, sciencey thing. But actually, there's a positive emotion with, with something that changes your opinion. That's why some people like haunted houses. Something scares you, and that's a rush. Don't scare me. Terrifies me. My, I'm, arms move around. You might get hurt. No. But I love a good flip. How many of you guys are HGTV fans? Uh, you know, you swing a hammer and you watch somebody else and you think you can do exactly what they do in 22 minutes. Total remodel time. Check out some of the flipping related shows on HGTV. This is just some of them. Every one of these is a flip the script kind of thing. Yeah, we're only in the F's so far with all the flippers. But there are so many shows of the same exact script that we're going to present you a piece of garbage and we're gonna change your perception, and we feel good by the end of the show. Changing our minds feels good. I love that one. Why the heck did I buy this house? That is the best title ever for a flipping show. I've not seen it, but they've got my attention now. Flipping a script is amazing. Seeing God through these eyes, I think totally changed the world for the people around Jesus right there in that moment. Portraying God as someone near and seeking, but even more so, we don't get this in our culture, but portraying God as a shepherd is mind-blowing. See, in the biblical times, shepherds were like the lowest of low. These guys were out in the wild. They lived with animals and kind of lived like animals. Cleanliness, personal hygiene were not high on their list of to-dos. You wake up in the morning and you don't think about those things. You think about where are my sheep and is there a bug I can eat to stay alive? So shepherds, the lowest form of dirty, smelly life, are the exact opposite of the view that the Pharisees would have of God. 180 degrees. 
By the way, who were the first people the angels went to when Jesus was born? Dirty, filthy, smelly shepherds. Amazing that God portrays and encourages and is all about being near and seeking. Not some distant judging God, but it gets better. This parable rattles another thing. It shakes up some things. It flips a script on what we believe about people. The Pharisees believed that people had kind of different ranks in society, right? You know, these were some people who did a lot of good. These people did medium good, and these people did no good. And they were talking about the crew around Jesus at the time and referred to them as these sinful people. This parable, this story, talks about the lost sheep. In this context, these aren't sinful people. These are valuable people. Totally flipping the script. The lost sheep was not a sinful lost sheep, but it was a valuable sheep, worthy to go after. I love one of our core values at the Ridge. Our core value, one of our core values is we believe nothing matters if people don't matter. Let me say that again. We believe nothing matters if people don't matter. That's some shepherd thinking, isn't it? That lost sheep matters. Lost sheep is worth going after. It matters. It has value. Not sinful people, but valuable people are the ones Jesus hung out with. Sinful versus valuable. Have you um, ever seen this picture in memes, memes? You see these guys going at it? It shows up online all the time. Um, Reed, our Connections pastor, is saying he sees it almost every day. These guys are going at it. They're fighting. This is Paul Tuttle Sr. and Paul Tuttle Jr. from the TV show American Chopper. And American Chopper was a show on several years ago that was famous for two things. One is making really killer, awesome motorcycles, and the other is these two guys fighting it out. And probably more bleeps per minute than any show in its time. These guys were vicious at each other. Well, I was in a practically empty airport with Paul Jr. about two chairs away once. And I'm sitting there, and I thought, this is really strange. There's Paul Jr., no phone out, no newspaper, no entourage, just sitting there by himself. And an older lady walked up to him and asked for an autograph for her grandson. And I thought, I know how Junior treats his elders. This isn't going to go well. He took the paper, signed the autograph, and began asking about her grandson. He spent the next 10 or 15 minutes listening to her and being interested in her grandson. Anybody walking up would have thought the grandson was the celebrity totally flipped my script. I had no idea that this guy was such a kind human being. Amazing. When you see people, what is the script you build up in your mind right off the bat? What are you looking at first? First impression, what is that thing that you start rating? You start building a scorebook, you're checking off the list. Hmm, I see something here, that's a plus. I see something there, that's a minus. What do you see? when people don't look like you? How about people that don't sound like you? What about people that don't think like you? Getting a little deeper, right? People that don't act like you, people that don't talk like you. What do you think about someone who doesn't vote like you and they post about it? Tough stuff, right? See, God sees value. God doesn't see these sinful people. He doesn't see the sinful sheep. He sees value. He sees the valuable sheep. There's one last one I want to hit, and I think this is one that often gets missed in this story. Jesus flips the script on what I think about me. We've talked about the shepherd. We've talked about how the shepherd goes after the lost sheep. But let's play out what's really going on with the shepherd as the sheep sees this coming. So the shepherd, 
walking through the wilderness, up and over the boulders, the sun's baking, and he's walking through swarms of bugs, and he finally sees the sheep. He finally sees you. And he unloads on it, right? I mean, that's normal. You stupid, stinking, dirty, rotten sheep. I have walked over boulders. I have gone through the sun. I've got bug bites in places you don't even want to know. And he grabs a rolled up newspaper and whacks it on the nose. Bad sheep. I don't know where he got the newspaper. Um, <laughs> bad sheep. Get your butt back to the herd or tonight it's lamb chops and tzatziki sauce. <laughs> the sheep's thinking, yeah. I got it coming. I went away doing my thing. I messed up. And I got it coming. That's kind of the way a lot of people live their lives. I messed up, and I've got it coming. They feel like the sheep, messed up and worthless. Right? Sheep's got it coming. It did it. It's hard going through life in the messed up and worthless mode. 24-7, you might have that hanging over you. Some of you, you hide it. You hide it. You post all the good stuff. And deep down, there's, there's an area in your life where you feel messed up and worthless. It's universal. Just this morning, on the radio was Imagine Dragon's Enemy. Almost half a billion views on YouTube. And one of the lines is, they tell you you're the greatest, but once you turn, they hate us. Oh, the misery, everybody wants to be my enemy. That's a song that resonates because so many people feel like lost sheep. But Jesus wants to flip that script. Let's go to the next part, verse 5, and see where the script gets flipped. And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. Boom! Wait. Climbed through the boulders, skin, knees, sunburn, bug bites, and when he finds the dirty, stinking, smelly, no. When he finds the sheep, he joyfully puts the sheep on his shoulders and carries it home. You see, Jesus flips the script. We are not messed up and worthless. We are forgiven and loved. And that's mind-blowing. From the perspective of the sheep, totally unexpected. The sheep probably had a view of itself saying, no, I'm, I'm messed up and worthless. What? Wait a minute. I'm, I'm getting a ride home. That's a special shepherd. Has anybody flipped a script in your life? Someone that had a perspective of you that you didn't have, kind of like the sheep being carried home? I, <laughs> weird one. I went to school, I went to college to be an engineer like 90% of Columbus, it feels like. Um, In this world, it means nothing. Um, Some places I can say I'm an engineer. Um, (laughs) One of the classes I had to take my junior year was called technical communications. That's a fancy word for speech class. And I do not want to get up in front of a room as a, a college student and today sometimes. Uh, It was terrifying, and my body had a way of letting everybody know. Two things would happen when Mark had to give a speech. One is he would sweat profusely. I'm speaking of myself in third person because I don't want to get too emotionally connected to the story and start doing it right now. Um, But I'm talking pit stains down to my belt. It was not pretty. I could actually feel it running down my side. No, it's gross. Um, But we're all friends, right? We're part of the same church. We can share. Um, It was awful. But that isn't even the worst of it. My natural reaction to, to nervousness, to stage fright, was to cry. What? You know, in in drama class, you get points for that, but not engineering school, no. And my lip would quiver, and I would get super, like, like, sobby. So one day in technical communications, I'm last to go. So I have 90, well, 80 minutes to build up the sweat and the lip cramps. And I remember getting up and giving a talk on something real sad, apparently, because I cried through it, about aerodynamic structures. 
And when I got to the end of that, I went and sat back down because that's what you do, right? No, the class was over and everybody's leaving. And as I sat back down, the professor came up to me and said, Mark, someday I think you're going to be part of leading something really big. Um, wait a minute. I was the guy that went last today. You got the wrong guy. I'm the one that needs a shower and some alone time and maybe a box of Kleenex. <laughs> but she saw something that totally changed my script. I thought I'd messed up. I thought what I just delivered in 10 minutes was the worst thing ever. But she flipped the script. She saw value. See, since the shepherd saw the sheep as valuable, the shepherd willingly does the heavy lifting. He doesn't say, get your butt back to the herd and whack it with a newspaper. He puts it on his shoulders and he carries it. The shepherd does the heavy lifting. And don't miss this connection. This is Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross did the heavy lifting. It's a story how Jesus came to be in the middle of us. Can this even be possible? The sheep messed up and didn't have to pay the price. That's exactly what's going on. No matter what the sheep did, the shepherd carried it home. No matter what's happened in your life, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, Jesus has done the heavy lifting. He wants to carry you home. No matter what you're going through right now, yesterday, last night, tomorrow, Jesus has done the heavy lifting on the cross. It's an amazing, amazing thing. No matter what, you're valued. Pretty cool. How can it get better? Check out verse 6. When he arrives back home, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. That's amazing to have a party over something that messed up. And the punchline, get this, in the same way there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Wow! There is more joy in heaven over that one that strayed away. Wow! That can only be God. Humans wouldn't think that way. Humans wouldn't act that way. God is amazing to be a God that loves so much and even celebrates when a lost sheep is found and brought home. You know what, maybe we're sitting here and some of us are part of the 99 and that's kind of hard to fathom. But I want to encourage you, let's be part of the celebration. Do you know any lost sheep? Somebody outside your circle even. Do they know that God loves them? How can we let them know that God loves them? How can we let them know that we love them? What can we do in that way? Can we invite them to the ridge? We design every Sunday so you can invite your friends. Maybe that's too big of a step. How about just pray for them? Is there a lost sheep that you know that you can pray for? When you see them, pray for them. When you see a car that looks like theirs, pray for them. God will open doors. It's incredible. But maybe you are feeling like You've messed up too much. There's just no way. Flip that script. You are valued. God loves you and wants to carry you. He's already done the heavy lifting, and he wants a party in heaven in your name. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for all of those sins, past, present, last week, last night, next week, on him. He did the heavy lifting and wants to carry you home and have a party in your honor. Can you imagine a party in heaven? Wouldn't that be kind of a, a wild concept? J dream with me a second, a party in heaven, all right? So how would God throw a party? All the people are around, does he text them? Does he send them a note or how's that work? I don't know, but you, you're at this party 
and think of how God would decorate for a party. I'm seeing galaxies. No telescope needed, they're just right there. Beautiful, amazing galaxies, colors our human eyes have never seen before. And the music is just perfect. It's like your new favorite song, even though you've never heard it. And you're hanging with your friends, you're hanging with your family. It is the perfect, perfect night. And then you hear the little tap on the glass, right? Ting, ting, ting. And Jesus steps out and says, thank you so much for being here. I am so, so glad that you came tonight because you are making such an impact in the world, and I want to celebrate that with you. Thank you for being here to celebrate one of my favorite people. This is a person that I gave my life for, and I want to have this party in their honor. And he goes behind the curtain and brings out the least expected person you'd imagine, the lost sheep, and the place goes nuts applauding and screaming in excitement and pure joy over the least likely one of all, the lost sheep. Flip the script. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being a God of lost sheep. Thank you for loving us so much that you would take on the form of a low shepherd just to come to us. It's amazing to think of the God of the universe in shepherd's clothes. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that we get to be part of celebrations and that you have celebrations planned in our name if we just accept it and take the ride home. Thank you, God, for leaving the 99 Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together.
serve it, still you give yourself away. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you've got questions about what you heard about this morning, or if you'd like to talk with someone, or if you'd just like somebody to pray with you, we would love the opportunity to chat with you. You can come right down out down front if you're here in person. You, and if you don't know what you want to say, you can even just say, hey, today I want to flip the script. We, we would love to take that journey with you from there. If you're joining us online, same thing. You can send us a message that says that. Or you can text chat, whether you're here in person or online. You can just text the word chat to 812. 408-1188. We'll take it from there. We are so glad you're here today. Next week, we're continuing our next guest series. We'll have uh, partnerships, actually, the next two weeks, so you get to hear from some of our community partners. So we're glad you're here today. Hope to see you next week. Have a great week.